In thousands of laboratories around the world, at this very moment, scientists are growing and using a very special set of cells to conduct research. This research ranges from the development of chemotherapy drugs to the study of viruses such as HIV and Ebola. Because of these cells, we have been able to map genes, clone entire organisms, and create vaccines. These cells are called HeLa cells, and their story is extraordinary. So far in this unit, we've learned about how cells divide through a process called mitosis. Let's recall that mitosis involves the division of a cell's genetic material, also known as DNA. By the way, can you identify the mitotic phase shown in the central cell? In order for you to grow, repair, and reproduce, your cells must divide their genetic contents. DNA is found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. That means that almost all of your 100 trillion cells contains an entire set of DNA. In humans, one set of DNA contains 46 chromosomes. During mitosis, the chromosomes are copied and split between two daughter cells. Recall that the steps of mitosis are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Although cell division is necessary to sustain life, it must be controlled. Some cells, like the cells in your digestive tract, must divide every few hours. Other cells, like nerve cells, don't divide at all. Cell division is controlled by several proteins. Cyclins, for example, regulate the timing of cell growth, while tumor suppressor proteins stop cells from dividing. When cells do not respond to the signals that regulate their growth, those cells divide uncontrollably. Cancer is the loss of a cell's ability to control its division. Scientists have identified several genes that are involved in cancer, such as BRCA1 and BRCA2, whose defects increase the chance of a person developing breast or ovarian cancer significantly. Cervical cancer occurs when cells of the cervix are infected with HPV, or human papillomavirus. The virus causes the breakdown of a tumor suppressor protein that inhibits cell growth when DNA is mutated. Cervical cancer is still the third most common form of cancer in women worldwide, but a vaccine has been developed to prevent the spread of some forms of cancer-causing HPV. This vaccine was developed using cells from a woman who died of cervical cancer over 50 years ago. Her name was Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta Lacks has made more contributions to science than any other person in history. So who was she, and why have you never heard of her? The great-granddaughter of slaves, Henrietta was born in Roanoke, Virginia in 1920 to poor tobacco farmers. She married her first cousin, and the couple settled near Baltimore. This was soon after the beginning of World War II, and many African Americans came north for work. In January of 1951, after giving birth to her fifth child, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer at Johns Hopkins, the only nearby hospital that treated black patients. During her treatment, Henrietta's doctor took a sample of the cancerous cervical cells. Unbeknownst to her, the cells were given to Dr. George Guy, who had been trying to grow cells outside of the human body in the lab. What he found was astonishing. Unlike any cells they had ever seen before, Dr. Guy and his colleagues found that Henrietta's cells were immortal. They never stopped dividing. Her cells doubled in size every 24 hours. Dr. Guy called these cells HeLa cells, after Henrietta Lacks, and shared these cells for free with any researcher that wanted them. Not long after, in October of 1951, Henrietta Lacks died of cervical cancer at the age of 31. She would never know of her impact on modern science. The first major medical breakthrough achieved because of HeLa cells 
was the invention of the polio vaccine in 1952. They were then used to accurately calculate the number of chromosomes in a human cell, making it possible for doctors to diagnose chromosomal disorders such as Down syndrome. HeLa cells became the first cells ever cloned and led to the technology used to clone Dolly the sheep. They were sent into space prior to any astronauts and then were included on the first manned missions. HeLa cells helped scientists discover the causes of diseases such as AIDS, tuberculosis, and various cancers and have led to the development of chemotherapy, radiation treatment, and cancer drugs. Currently, there are over 11,000 patents involving HeLa cells. Scientists have grown over 50 million metric tons of her cells. If you laid all the HeLa cells ever grown end to end, they'd wrap around the Earth at least three times. But the use of HeLa cells brings up many ethical issues. Neither Henrietta Lacks nor her family gave her doctor permission to harvest her cells. In fact, for many years, Henrietta Lacks' family knew nothing about the impact her cells had on medical science. Since Henrietta's death in 1951, HeLa cells have been commercialized and have generated billions of dollars. The Lacks family has never seen a dime of the profits that came from the findings generated by HeLa cells. However, in 2013, the Lacks family finally earned the right to control access to the genetic information found in HeLa cells, thereby ensuring the information would only be used for scientific research. Today, as a result of the issues brought up by HeLa cells, consent is routinely sought for taking tissue samples from patients. Modern science owes a great deal to Henrietta Lacks. Although she came from humble beginnings, she changed what we know about ourselves and who we are as humans. Acknowledging Henrietta Lacks' contributions to our world helped to rectify the tragic and unjust circumstances of the discovery of HeLa cells, the immortal cell line. <laughs>